What's up, guys? It's Uncle Freedom coming to you on a not glorious and well-deserved day off, but instead the beginning of my work week, which will see me working overnights for 10 of the next 11 days. But today we're going to talk about something super important to your concealed carry life and your everyday carry, and that is your holster. So guys, go ahead and like and subscribe. Tell a friend because we are still growing. It is quite fantastic. I've got some cool stuff on the horizon. We're going to actually do some videos of some of the gel tests and stuff because that's what you guys want to see. So go ahead, like, subscribe, tell a friend, and let's get this show on the road. So when we talk about your everyday carry firearm, we'll look at one of mine. So this guy is my SIG. This is a SIG P320X carry. Uh, I think I bought this in 2018 or 2019. Um, excellent handgun. Never had a problem with it. It's never gone off if I didn't manipulate the trigger myself. I run mine with the original SIG Romeo 1 optic and the TLR7 stream light down here. I actually do not have the original X carry frame on here. I have the Wilson combat frame, which really changed the game for this handgun. It's totally different feeling. And I'm telling you guys, if you're on the fence about the 320s, something you can do is look into the different frame modules because it really does change the way the gun carries. Um, I know SIG had their issues. And I would absolutely be lying to you if I told you that... When all the stuff came out about guns firing in the holster with you not having any direct connection with them, I carry appendix. So the thoughts of having my jiggly bits shot off my body and slammed down into the inside of my boot did not make me feel very good about carrying this. And I stopped carrying this gun. Um, I spoke to SIG. I talked to him. So the original ones that they had came out had a different trigger on it. This is actually the X series trigger. Uh, so this is their after their very upgraded trigger that was on like their Legion and stuff like that. This trigger was not a part of the problem. It did not have drop safe, and actually drop safe was not due to anything with the sear. It was due to the actual mass of the trigger shoe itself. And when it would drop at a certain angle, the trigger shoe would come back and engage the sear. Um, this one I can actually feel this guy when I pull on it. So there's my wall. And there is a, I can feel myself pulling that striker back just that last little bit before it releases. I've gone back to carrying this gun. Um, I've, like I said, I've never had a problem with it. I will say that SIG's surface finish is absolute garbage. Um, it gets uh, that cool battle worn finish really damn fast. Uh, and there's one more thing I hate about this gun. And that is that SIG, for some reason, they ported the top of this thing when I don't have a ported barrel, so it doesn't make sense. I get it. It's weight relief for the slide and all, but you, you, you couldn't have fucking dovetailed this bitch for me to have a rear sight. Instead, it's all attached to the plate. Uh, they fixed that in subsequent generations, but this guy doesn't have a backup iron, though it does have a notch in the original Romeo that I can use. Yes, I know the Romeo is not the best optic, but this one's been pretty reliable, and judging by the scuffs and marks all over it, it's seen some love and abuse. I've never had a problem with it losing zeros. I just remember to change the batteries every six months because that's about what it takes. But overall, I like this gun. This gun is very accurate. It does have a higher bore axis, but it is a very exceptionally good firearm. I run this gun off duty. Um, I run this in a concealed fashion on duty. I like this gun. So that led to me needing a better holster. So the holster for this gun that I was originally carrying is actually made by a pretty stellar guy out of California, and that's McKinnitech Holsters. This was the original holster I had made for this gun when I bought it. This is not a bad holster, but it has some things I don't technically care for the further I've gone down my journey and more requirements I put on myself and the gun. One is the clip. Two is I do not care for this claw. Now, I've never broken a McKinnitech holster. I own six of them from him. They're all exceptionally well-made, well-molded to the gun with great retention. So... McKinnitech makes awesome stuff. That said, I wanted to change things up because there were things I didn't like with this. I, I had stability issues with it, and I felt like it was time to go a different route. So I was actually searching around, looking for a new holster one night on night shift, sitting in a uh, parking lot somewhere watching for speeders, and I came across Tenacore holsters, and I was kind of blown away by what Tenacore is doing. So normally when you buy a holster for a weapon mounted light, you actually have to buy the holster based off of the weapon mounted light because that's where the retention comes from and you're stuck. If you ever change lights again, you're stuck. You have to buy a new holster. It's a new hundred pieces, hundred dollar piece of Kydex to order to carry your gun. So Tenacore offers something called the Keratum Lux. Now the Keratum is, uh, what is it? Latin for certain or fixed, uh, sure, trusted. And um, the Lux stands for light. 
but the way they developed their holsters was so that they actually retained off the gun and not off the light, allowing you to run different weapon mounted lights in the same kind of configuration or platform, whether that was a TLR-7 or a, one of the Enforces or something like that. So that really spoke to me. Uh, they're also using, I think it's a .39 Kydex, um, which is pretty cool, and they come factory with the discrete carry concepts clips, which are just the best clip on the market. I don't care who you are, plastic clips don't hold a candle to this. Discrete carry concepts makes the best clips on the market. Their monoblock clips just change the game as far as the one clip option for a holster. The way they retain, the way they clip onto the bottom of your belt, they're incredibly stable. So I actually reached out to Tenacore, not as a YouTube creator, though I did mention that I do have a YouTube channel that is growing, thanks to you people out there. And I mentioned to them that I wanted to check one of these out, and I all I wanted to know was, hey, guys, I want to run this for off-duty work. I want to run this for when concealed carry is a requirement for something I'm doing. And I would like, do you guys have even a discount code? Because saving money in the economy we have is a great option. Well, Tenacore reached out to me, and they were like, we're going to hook you up. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. That's pretty fucking badass. They sent one over to me, and this is the Keratum Lux. Now, I will tell you just straight out of the gate, if we look at the comparison and size footprint of these two holsters, that is a pretty substantial wide thing here. I also have two clips instead of one here. And like I said, these guys do come with the discrete carry concept clips on here. You can just check out that awesome underhook that you'll see on there to hold under your belt. These are made out of like spring steel, so they're super, very comfortable. The Keratum was actually designed as kind of a one-stop option from what I've seen. I can put cant into this. I can run this at four o'clock. I can run this appendix rig. And one of the coolest parts about this, guys, instead of having a claw, I have these little blocks here. Now, the Keratum itself comes with three different size blocks on here. This this one, I believe, let me see here. This is the .425. There's also a .3 and a .550 if you need a little more retention to pull that pistol grip back into your body. comes with all the mounting hardware, both clips. And the fit and finish on this guy is unreal. Uh, every edge is perfectly well buffed out. I mean, the... the it just feels quality. You ever pick up a holster and you're like, damn, this feels nice. So running that with something like this, oh my God, the retention is amazing. There, you gotta shake it hard to get it out. You see it's got an open tip here for the TLR7 to come out. That facilitates being able to use different types of lights. You cannot run a TLR1 on here, but they do make one for full-size weapon lights as well. Uh, this thing is just rock solid. The retention on this, is just amazing. It's got that nice positive click when you stick the firearm in there. I, I'm impressed with this holster. The fit and the finish, the way it works. Um, the discrete carry concept clips do take some getting used to because they are kind of a bitch the first few times you play with them. If you've never messed with them, they hook on your belt. And if you don't get them on your belt, they will hook on your pants. And you will find yourself digging your fingers under here trying to get this thing up. That said, once they're on, it's secure, and I will say this is an incredibly comfortable holster. Once I got the right height where I wanted it, some guys want this thing bottomed out so that the gun sits way down in your pants, not me. I like mine a little bit higher out because while I may look fit on TV, I have a small amount of tactical winter weight. I am still carrying across my gut because Thanksgiving is amazing, and if you don't get an extra slice of pecan pie, are you truly an American? So that said... I was able to make this work perfectly for me, and it is incredibly comfortable. Now, one of the things I appreciated about these guys, and I really, really appreciate this, and I wish more holster companies would do it, is they sent this cool card to me when it came with it, and I love this. The card has in big bold letters, no safe queens. It flat tells you that they're cl formed close to the gun, and they will cause surface wear to your firearm. And if that's an issue, they'll give you a return, a paid return envelope to send it back, no harm, no foul. But I love the fact that they are tailoring their stuff to the end user that actually treats their gun as a tool because that's what it is. This is a tool that I might find myself relying on in a defensive encounter, self-defense, protecting myself, protecting others. And to me, knowing that the company that developed this holster treats guns the same way I do, which is a life-saving tool that has to be maintained, but it is a tool. I don't get mad when I scratch my hammer. I don't get mad when I ding up an AR. I don't get mad when I spray paint stuff. Because here's the deal. If I get so upset that I chewed the finish off of this slide, I will paint this damn slide. I will Krylon touch this bitch and we will be good to go again. 
it's a tool, guys. You're going to get wear on it. You're going to use it. You're going to ding things up. And that just tells a story, and it kind of goes through life with you. And that's kind of what makes the charm of owning a firearm. I mean, nobody's ever picked up a Milsert and been like, damn it, I wish it didn't have this scar on it. No, you look at a Milsert and you're like, man, I wonder what story that's got to tell. At least I do. I find the history behind stuff really engaging. Hell, I live in a 110-year-old farmhouse, and I absolutely love it. The little quirks that come with having stuff, and I look at things the same way I look at most everything in my life. I buy high-quality knives, and I use my knives, and if they get beat up and dinged up, scratched up, I don't care because it tells a story. I wear almost exclusively mechanical watches because I find something cool about wearing a tiny beating machine on my wrist, and to me, that's awesome. And as I wear watches, they ding up, they get scratches, they tell a story, and that I can look at that and remember when I got that scar, or that scratch or something. They're just like tattoos or scars on your body. They tell a story. Same deal with a gun. This is a tool. And um, if it gets banged up, scratched up, that just means I'm using that tool. And uh, to me, that's important. And I do think it's really cool that they put that in there, giving you zero doubt that they designed this shit as a user and not to keep your staccato in showroom factory fresh condition. So I think that's pretty awesome and dope. Comes in just a standard plastic bag a couple of little deals comes with all the hardware though for the caradum so you get the three different size wing blocks on here you get special uh, or the cam bars you get extra uh, washers on the inside you get extra screws you get two of the discrete carry concept clips with all the hardware to mount them up I mean this is this is a rock solid option these will set you back about hundred and twenty dollars they're fantastic. I have to say I was immediately taken with the quality of this thing, and I cannot wait to run this more and more. Since it came in, it has been inside of my pants, and I absolutely loved it. I loved the retention, the ease, the how smooth that draw was, how sure and, and just absolutely reassuring that, that retention was. Um, that said, guys, if you're up Totally uncomfortable carrying a firearm in the front of your pants because you're worried about blowing your jiggly bitch and your jiggly bits into the next century. I get it, okay. Um, however, I will tell you that carrying at four o'clock is no less safe because your femoral artery will get clipped if you shoot around off through your leg. It happens to people that don't play with uh, guns in the right form fashion. I will say that you can usually avoid any mishap with a handgun or any firearm for that matter if you adhere to the four firearm safety rules. Which, if you don't know what they are. Tentacor actually prints them on your cardboard for you, and those are treat every firearm as if it's always loaded. Do not point your firearm at anything you don't intend to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are aligned and you're ready to shoot, and know what is to, to your target, backstop to your target, and beyond. Because the last thing you want to do is shoot your paper plate and kill somebody's poor, innocent, free-range upland game cow if you live in the Midwest. So guys, there you go. Food for thought. I just wanted to take a quick look at the Tenacore Keratum Lux holster. This thing is awesome, and I will more than likely, after a couple of weeks of testing this, look into picking up a couple of more for different weapon platforms that I run. I love being able to change out lights and do different things and test different things because that's just what I do. So stay tuned for more to come from me, guys. We've got a lot of stuff on deck. I'm going to have a good ass time doing it. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate all the subscribes, the likes. I appreciate the comments, even the ones that don't make sense or that they're stupid or they're just hating on me because I'm a cop. Whatever, dude. If it floats your boat to just be mad at somebody because of what they do for a living, that's cool. I'll stand outside and throw rocks at you while you're fucking mowing. I, I mean, what do you want me to do? So, guys, I am Uncle Freedom again. Like and subscribe. Tell a friend. And, uh... We'll continue growing. I'll continue doing cool shit, and we'll see where this takes us next. So take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.